So in this lesson, I would like to introduce you, or at least expose you, to something called cost accounting. And cost accounting is kind of like a subject or a course unto itself. So we're not going to get into a lot of detail, like we won't cover what's called equivalent units of production and process cost accounting. We're just going to touch on some real basic concepts, just to so, so you know that there is a whole world out there of cost accounting, and you need to understand that it does exist, and maybe some basic concepts on how it works, just in case you get involved in a manufacturing of business or a business that can measure its production processes and apply standards to them. So in the world of cost accounting, cost accounting basically is going to establish standards. Standard units, standard measures that they can use because what happens is they know exactly what their production and manufacturing process is. And they know exactly what their costs are. And because it becomes so highly predictable, because it becomes highly predictable, they can establish these standards and then they can compare these standards to the actuals out of the production process or the manufacturing process and the difference between these standards and actuals are going to give rise to some variances. So literally, we're going to do, you might call this variance accounting or cost accounting. So in the world of cost accounting, they will literally set up special accounts to account for their cost and measure standards against actuals and they'll have a variance in their accounting system. And we will break down when we look at and we make stuff, we manufacture or produce products and things, we can break our cost down into three main categories, three components. The direct materials. This is the raw materials that you use to make stuff. So maybe it could be like steel is used as a raw material to help manufacture and make automobiles, or sugar is used to help manufacture and make uh, cereal and cookies and things like that, or flour is used. All that stuff, that's raw materials. That's direct, directly associated, those are the materials directly associated with the production of a product. Likewise, you have people who are directly associated with actually assembling, putting together, manufacturing the products. Direct labor. So we have direct materials. That's a primary cost of production in the world of cost accounting. A second type of cost is direct labor. The people actually are on the shop floor manufacturing, assembling, putting the products, making them, putting them together. And finally we have a third category which is overhead. Production or manufacturing overhead. Overhead directly associated with the production and manufacturing of those products. And we can break these down further so that we can calculate our actuals, compare our standards to actuals and calculate variances. So in the world of cost accounting, for these direct materials and direct labor, we want to measure the rates and the quantity. The rates and the quantity. So in this, the rate we're going to measure is the price of the materials. So we're going to, we know we have a long-term contract to buy sugar or steel at a specific unit price. That becomes our standard. But the prices may change because the market changes. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare our standard contract price under our contract to acquire materials. We know what the standard price is and we're going to compare it to the actual price we pay for raw materials. That's going to give rise to a variance. Also, what we use, so we will do a quantity. We will compare quant so price of materials and quantity of materials. That's the usage of materials in the production process because we know exactly how much steel it takes to make one automobile. We know exactly how much sugar it takes to make one box of cereal. So we'll compare the quantity, we know what exactly what we should be using, the standard quantity, and we'll compare it to what was actually used in the production process. That will give rise to a variance where we compare quantity, price. Likewise, we're going to do the kind of the same thing under here, under direct labor. 
So we'll look at the rate that we pay people. So this is the labor rate that we pay our people on the production floor. And we know exactly what that should be in the future. And we can compare that to the actual labor rate that we actually end up paying because maybe there's a premium. Sometimes you have to pay time and a half because they worked overtime. So what that's going to do is that's going to give rise to a variance when we compare standard labor rates to actual labor rates paid for that production cycle or period that we're measuring in the world of cost accounting. And likewise, we'll measure quantity again, which is the hours worked. So we know how many hours it takes to assemble a car. We know how many hours it takes to put all this stuff together. But then we compare to the actual hours it took to actually produce it, and we'll compare that to give rise to a variance. So we have one, two, three, four variances. Direct materials variance, price and quantity, direct labor variance, the labor rate variance, and the labor quantity variance. And then finally, under overhead, we can divide overhead, I'll scoot down, between variable, overhead, and fixed. And we will have some standard rates for each of these. And that will help drive comparisons to what we call budgeted overhead, and we'll come up with variances for these two. What variable overhead is, variable means it changes with the level of production. So, for example, if we are uh, manufacturing something and we have, let's say, some quality inspectors, those quality inspectors are not directly associated with actually making the product. But we need a few quality inspectors just to kind of look over the stuff to make sure it meets quality standards before we ship it out the door. As we produce more stuff, we may have to hire a few more quality inspectors. As we produce less, we may not need as many quality inspectors. That's variable overhead. On the other hand, you might have fixed overhead as well. So if you have a facility, a fixed, and remember, you have fixed facilities. So anytime you have fixed facilities, you're going to have some fixed overhead. For example, that fixed facility sits on land. It has property taxes, right? Those property taxes have to be paid on that manufacturing facility regardless if you produce one product or a hundred products. So that overhead's fixed. This is fixed overhead. Things related to the facilities, things that vary tend to be related to whether it changes with productions. Even the, sometimes utilities will even, sometimes your utilities and your maintenance for some of your production facilities will be variable as well because you need less if you're not producing more. Sometimes you get into an area of called semi-variable. So it's not always clear to distinguish it, but we're going to try to establish standards. Once we know what those standards are, we can establish it and put it into these two buckets. Then we can calculate some variance for variable and fixed overhead. So what we will do, I know this is kind of like, wow, this is a lot, and it's hard for me to grasp this. The best way to go, the best way to understand this is to work through a really good example. So what we will do in the next lesson, we'll work through an example, and it's also in your case study workbook. Again, get that case study workbook out so you can kind of follow along and see what's going on. So in the next lesson, we'll actually calculate one, two, three, four, five, six variances in your case study workbook. It's actually a little bit more expanded. But we'll cover the four, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, the six variances that cover the three major cost categories in the world of cost accounting. So we'll go through that in the next lesson so you understand and have some basic exposure to the world of cost accounting.